the good Catholic French had been offended to see Mary Queen of Scots forcibly married to a child, she at the age of sixteen while he was fifteen, and her new husband soon died in 1560 at the age of seventeen of a middle ear infection after having been the King of France for seventeen months, and Mary went home to Scotland. When Henry VIII died, and his eldest child, the Spanish Mary I, became queen in 1553. The Pope's ministers were welcomed back into England, and all laws passed by Henry VIII against the Catholic Church were thrown out, and Spain was thrilled. Spanish Mary I burned hundreds of English Protestants in an attempt to gather them back into the Catholic fold, and killing Protestants gave her the title of Bloody Mary and in only five years she sickened and died, and Henry VIII's other daughter, Elizabeth I, was crowned in 1558 as the second-ever Queen of England. Mary I had burned English churchmen at the stake for refusing to say that communion bread was the actual body of Jesus Christ, and then she declared war on France, who was no match for the combined armies of England and Spain. But the following year, the French kicked every last Englishman out of France, will it, winning back Calais for good and all, and the English would never again own the potty Calais that had belonged to England ever since Edward III had tried to become the King of France over two hundred years earlier with his Hundred Years' War. Bloody Mary died at the age of forty-two that year Calais became France again. And because she'd insisted on forcing Roman Catholicism on France, rather than working with their more liberal version of popery, Bloody Mary lost the last piece of Europe on the main continent that would condemn England to remain an island forever. In 1588, the Spanish Armada sailed with 130 ships to England to get the Protestant Elizabeth I off the throne of England because, according to the Holy Roman Empire, Henry VIII had never officially divorced Catherine, and that meant Elizabeth I was illeg illegitimate. The Holy Roman Empire of Habsburg, Spain, and Austria wanted to stop Elizabeth's sea dogs and their Protestant friends in Holland from raiding Catholic Dutch ships, and they wanted Elizabeth's Catholic cousin Mary Queen of Scots on the throne of England instead of Elizabeth I, so Elizabeth had Mary Queen of Scots put in prison and finally beheaded in 1587. Holland and Belgium asked her to kick out the Catholic Spanish and offered to make her their queen if they did, but Elizabeth only sent them troops and money, and when the English troops failed to beat the Spanish in Belgium, Elizabeth I solicited the Moslem Turks to help her fight the Pope. Elizabeth had sent her sea dogs to help the Protestants in Holland fight the Catholics, while the Pope in Rome had supported the Spanish Armada's mission. And when the Spanish, the Spaniards, anchored off Calais in 1588, not far from Dunkirk, oh no, oh, and when the Spaniards anchored off Calais in 1588, not far from Dunkirk, the English sent burning ships towards the Spanish fleet, who cut their anchor ropes to flee, and these ships would soon be wrecked by storms off the shores of Ireland and Scotland for want of having anchors. The united Spanish-Austrian Habsburg Holy Roman Empire had thrived as their treasure ships had returned from the new world laden with gold and silver, bringing the treasure into the ports of Spain and into the Austrian port of Trieste, and the Spanish treasure ships bringing wealth from the new world had financed the com combined armies of the Austrian Habsburgs and Spain, and these militaries were kept strong not merely to defend the Catholic faith, but especially to keep the Ottoman Moslems out of Europe, so the Protestant Elizabeth I, making common cause with the Moslems, had been exceptionally egregious to the Europeans. 
Spain had become the richest country in the world, while Martin Luther's new religion was causing great trouble for Germany and England and Belgium. And because of Martin Luther, Spanish ships bearing gold and silver were being plagued by Protestant English and Protestant Dutch pirates. And after the Spanish Armada was destroyed, there would be no more Spanish ships laden with gold coming from the Americas for the English sea dogs to board and plunder. Martin Luther had nailed his anti-Catholic thesis to the door of the All Saints Church on Halloween, and every good Catholic knew exactly what that meant, and the Spanish Armada had been built to stop piracy wherever it was found on God's wide oceans. The Bible was now being translated into the language of the common people, and upon reading the original story, peasants were no longer willing to take the word of the nobility for what God meant about who should be in charge of their souls. The Spanish thought God was the Pope, and the French thought that God was France, and the British thought that God meant for the King of England also to be the King of France, and while England was fighting with France and Shakespeare's plays were being written down, Puritans from England were moving to Holland. In 1920, 120 of the Puritans sailed for Holland on the Mayflower, bound for America, after which 20,000 of them would follow for the next 20 years. Holland had once belonged to Charlemagne then to Catholic France, and then to Catholic Spain, until Holland's William of Orange made everyone Protestant in 1581. The Catholic France joined with the Protestants in the Thirty Years' War so they could fight over Holland, and after thirty years of war, southern Holland was Spanish Catholic, and northern Holland was Protestant in 1648, and with their neighbor across the channel all settled in for some peace, the English Parliament decided it was time to kill their Catholic king, which the common English accepted because he'd been married to a French woman. The English had revolted over having to fight the Thirty Years' War and the English Civil War broke out from 1642 to 1651, pitting Catholics in the countryside against Protestants in the cities. And the English Civil War started 40 years after the death of Elizabeth I, and brought on the deaths of 30,000 Scottish, Irish, and Englishmen. London sided with Parliament, while Wales sided with Charles I, and the poor working folks sided with Parliament, while the landed country lords sided with the king, and the Protestant upstarts sided with Parliament, while the universities and church leaders sided with the king. The English slew each other for nine years in door-to-door -door factional fighting, and the Scots didn't want to take either side, but were willing to help Charles I, as long as he paid them, and when Charles I became desperate for funds, the Scots sold him to Parliament, who sentenced the king to death, while mercenaries waited outside the chambers to murder those who would not sign, and threatened to murder their families too. Parliament killed their king as soon as the Thirty Years' War ended, and the English army helped Parliament execute the king in 1649 by beheading him right outside the dining-room windows of Whitehall. The killing of the Catholic king turned England into a commonwealth for ten years, until the beheaded Charles I's son became the king as Charles II, even though he was a closet, closet Catholic. So Charles II pretended he wasn't a Catholic by going around England attending Protestant services, but he remained a Catholic at heart. James VI one had married Anne of Denmark Hanover, and their eldest son was named Henry after Lord Darnley, and he'd been born at Stirling Castle and died at the age of eighteen of typhoid fever. So James VI one's second son, Charles I, had become king in sixteen twenty five. At some unknown time, Charles I's mother Anne had converted to Catholicism, and someone had been caught bringing her a rosary from the Pope, and was locked in the tower for ten months, and then Charles I married a Catholic French woman who couldn't speak English, and she would have six children who lived, and three who died, and their eldest was Charles II, who would become the King of England after Parliament murdered his father. The Dutch refused to sell 
<clears throat> the Dutch refused to sail up the Thames to help London kill its king, so Parliament declared war on Holland in 1652, a little over three years after they killed their King Charles I. And when Parliament had been casting about for someone to put on the throne rather than Charles II, the Scots crowned Charles II as the new King of Scotland at Scone Abbey in 1651, and Charles II gathered arms and marched with the Scots into England, but they were defeated at the Battle of Worcester, Worcester that September, and that would be the final battle of the English Civil War. At Worcester, most of Charles II's soldiers were Scottish, and the enemy had found out all of Charles II's plans and were able to build two pontoon bridges across a river so they could encircle Charles II and his Scots. And the enemy held all the bridges, all the other bridges, that Charles II could have retreated across, and they garrisoned all the towns and roads along his line of retreat. After being surrounded, Charles II had to surrender, and his captured soldiers were forced to fight on the other side for the enemy. And when 8,000 of them refused, they were deported to New England and to the West Indies to work as indentured slaves. Thomas Jefferson and John Adams would visit Worcester in 1786 and were appalled that the locals didn't know about the battle that had been fought there. So John Adams gave them a lecture about it and admonished them by asking how could they forget the ground where they had fought for their freedom, and he told them it was holy ground more sacred than their churches. A turning point in the Battle of Worcester had been when the enemy seized an important fort and turned its big guns against Charles II's soldiers, and the Battle of Sedan would be a repeat of Worcester when Bismarck beat the French at Metz in 1870, and that victory had marked the beginning of the Second Reich. At Metz, Bismarck had captured the French commander using the same tactics as the Battle of Worcester, after which all of France had immediately surrendered, and when Bismarck marched into Paris two weeks later, his soldiers joined together with what was left of the French army to smash the communists at the Paris Commune. The French army had surrendered 84,000 soldiers to the Prussians at Sedan on the 1st of September, in 1870, and the new Prussian state then controlled the Baltic Sea, while Britain retained suzerainty over Hanover. The Battle of the Bulge in 18, the Battle of the Bulge in 1944 would be a repeat of both these battles of Worcester and Sedan, and when Hitler marched into France in 1940. He would stay in Charleville on the Meuse River, just 10 miles downstream from Sedan and 30 miles upstream from Dinant. When Napoleon had first appeared in France in 1793 as an artillery commander at the siege of Toulon, he beat the British and their allies from the 18th of September to the 17th of December. And after two decades of Napoleonic wars, the French had finally been defeated militarily at Waterloo, but Napoleon's communist ideas percolated throughout Europe for the next 35 years until that communist crusade brought on the year of revolutions in 1848, and acquiescence to the mobs would culminate 70 years later in the overthrow of Russia in 1917, seen as a victory of the common man over the nobility rather than any progressivist gains for the working class. After the Battle of Worcester ending the English Civil War, Catholic at heart Charles II escaped to Normandy, and he remained in exile in France and Holland and Belgium for ten years, hoping to invade England to get his throne back from Parliament. But it had gotten complicated, because the army that Parliament had raised against him grew stronger than Parliament itself, and after defeating Charles II's supporters, the problem for Parliament was how to get power back from the army. While Charles II was in exile across the Channel, the English bested the Dutch fleet in February at the Battle of Portland in 1653, and after they beat what was left of the Dutch fleet at Texel on the 3rd of June, the North Sea would be ruled by the Royal Navy as the prosperity of Holland declined. 
The problem with the Dutch was that they'd been building ships for trade rather than for war, and with the English in control of the channel, it was more difficult for the Austrian Holy Roman Emperor to send help to exiled Charles II by sea, since the land routes from Austria to the Netherlands had been severed in the Thirty Years' War. The Crown had been using Belgium as a battlefield to fight with France for centuries, and as soon as the English Parliament had chased Tar Charles II out of England, they passed the Act of Settlement in 1653 that took land away from Catholics and gave these estates to Protestants, and Catholics became tenants while Protestants became landlords, and this redistribution of land was done mainly to make work for the soldiers hired by Parliament to get rid of Charles II. To reclaim his throne, Catholic at heart Charles II fought the Battle of the Dunes on the 14th of June in 1658, after which the Scots marched on London and demanded that elections be held to get new people into Parliament to replace those who had forced Charles II to flee. And in exchange for putting Charles II back on the throne, all his enemies must be forgiven for killing his father except for nine of the ringleaders, and these were to be executed in public, even though they had to dig up three of them from their graves to properly execute them. The Battle of the Dunes in 1658 was also called the Battle of Dunkirk, and Dunkirk was a Dutch word that meant the church in the dunes and the British would try to recreate the Battle of the Dunes in 1917 using an idea Winston Churchill came up with while he was planning Gallipoli. This time in the Great War, the Battle of the Dunes would have the British landing at Dunkirk concealed by 80 boats burning 50 tons of phosphorus, and it was planned as Operation Hush, but the landing at the Dunes had to be postponed when the Battle of Arras failed. Monty had been there that day at Arras, and he was shot by a sniper inland from Dunkirk, and another day he would get hit in the knee, and Operation Hush was tried again during the Third Battle of Ypres, while Hitler was on the other side fighting for Germany. This time, this second time with the recreation of the Battle of the Dunes, the British at Dunkirk faced the Germans' long max gun that was a cousin of the Big Bertha, and the Long Max fired on the dunes from 30 miles away as the British were unloading three parties with their 200 bicycles and three motorcycles each. To stop Operation Hush, the Germans named their end of it Strandfest or Operation Beach Party, and they used poison gas for the first time, and they used flamethrowers, and the British suffered 75% casualties. After the Battle of the Dunes in 1658, Dublin had again declared Charles II king on the 14th of May in 1660, and Charles II left from Europe to return to England the following week, and he was 30 years old, and would make many good reforms for England despite the ongoing stubborn resistance from Parliament. Charles II sold Dunkirk to France in 1662 for a large sum of money, and the French fortified it against the English, but the Treaty of Utrecht in 1713 made the French demolish all the forts, and Dunkirk would be completely destroyed by the RAF on the final day of Hitler's war. Charles II married the Catholic daughter of the King of Portugal in 1662, and she brought tea-drinking to England and Charles II decreed that females should play the part of women on the theater stage instead of having men playing all the female roles. Charles II had many affairs with various mistresses with whom he fathered children, but he would have no surviving children with his wife, and Charles II refused to divorce her and demanded that she be treated with respect, and he named queens in New York City after her in 1665, and because they had no children, Charles II's younger brother James would become the next king. With the restoration of Charles II, the Royal Navy became independent from the Crown and called itself, quote, a national institution, close quote, answerable to no one but themselves, 
So the Dutch stopped using militarized merchantmen and built purposely designed heavy warships to counter the pirates of the Royal Navy. As soon as Parliament had killed their king, they sent mercenaries over to Holland and started killing Dutch officials sympathetic to Catholics, and it escalated into a declared war on Holland with few knowing which side they were really on, and the Dutch lost and were forced to agree to Parliament's demands, and that included ignoring the Catholic at heart, Charles II. The Second Anglo-Dutch War started in 1665 and went on for two years. The du the Second Anglo-Dutch War started in 1665 and went on for two years, would be won by the Dutch. When the Royal Navy ran out of money to supply their ships, while the Dutch could afford to keep it going for a while yet. The Dutch victory was helped by the Great Fire of London in September of 1666 that was brought under control when the army used gunpowder to create fire breaks and the fire was blamed on a bakery so as not to derail the ongoing peace negotiations and the death toll was unknown because the fire storm that raged for three days had been so intense that most of the victims were completely cremated. The Protestants blamed the Catholics for setting the fire, and the Catholics knew that it had been God himself who'd punished the predominantly Protestant town of London. And while attempting to blame Catholics for the Great Fire, the English fleet arrived back from setting 140 Dutch merchant ships on fire in Holmes' bonfire, and when they learned of that action, even the Protestants agreed that London had it coming. Parliament made an alliance with Protestant Sweden and Protestant Holland behind Charles II's back that gave the Royal Navy permission to protect Holland from the Catholic French. And when the Swedes joined in, Louis XIV signed the Treaty of Aachen in 1668 because he didn't want any Swedish or Norwegian Vikings landing in France. Without that Swedish threat, Louis XIV would not have signed the Aachen Treaty because it was obvious that a cabal just wanted to get control of Holland to use as a base for continuing their war against France in hopes of regaining the title of King of France for the English king just because Ethelred the Unready had married the daughter of the Duke of Normandy way back when.